Silly, where else would we be? Just mommy, sister, you and me. Now tell me, how did it go? Did you find it? No? Hmm, pity. Maybe you're simply looking in the wrong places. Did you ever think of that? Ugh. Oh well, who knows? Say, why don't you go inside and see if you can help mommy with the cooking? The creator was kind to us today and sent a big fat elk right in front of my bow, all right? I left here. But I was right, wasn't I? A real gem we've got here. Well then, let's waste no more time and get to it, shall we? What? Now when you look at that, I totally forgot about them. They're dead, don't you remember? You murdered them back then, both of them. But hey, no use crying over spilled milk, right? At least this means there's more meat for the two of us. You still remember how to do this, right? First, off with the skin, slice up the belly, then out with the entrails. I'll look for a nice sharp knife in the meantime, to cut off the head. I don't think either of us wants to eat that, do we? <laughs> oh silly, what's this again? We both know that's a lie. You did it. I remember it all. First. You set this horrible fire to your sister's crib. She screamed and screamed, and Mommy heard it, but when she finally got there, nothing was left of her but burnt flesh. And, oh gosh, do we really need to go through this again? You know how sad it makes me when you do this. You killed them, period. No matter how often you tell me you didn't, it changes nothing. You hear me? Nothing. Now please, let's start cooking. I'm so bloody damn hungry. Oh, by the Creator's name, why are you telling these lies? Isn't it enough that you murdered us? Do you really have to bother me over and over with your stupid, pathetic, and pointless whining? You know, sometimes I wish the Creator would have made me just a little less merciful. Just a little less pious. Because then, I would have realized that you were tainted by sin long before any of this had ever happened. And instead of raising you, feeding you, and loving you like a father does, I would have put you in the horse trough right after you were born. Yes, I should have killed you. I should have just killed you. Just like you killed us. And now, you think you're safe because we're all under the earth, don't you? Well, listen up, my child. You are wrong. And do you know why? Because the dead don't forget. Do you hear me? The dead don't forget. Now enough of this useless chatter. I'm bloody starving. Bring me the meat, you spoiled brat. Bring it to me. Bring me a nice crisp piece of meat. 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 Let's begin with a question. 
It might sound simple to you at first, but I pray you to think about it. What distinguishes a free man from a slave? For now, however, let us start this story where another one ended three years ago, with the death of the Lightborn. For 4,000 years they had reigned over this world, seven arcanists who, through their magic, had acquired eternal life. In a time of chaos, they gave mankind what they thought it needed most, to be ruled over with an iron-clad, fair hand. Within just one century, they united the shattered lands, and a single century later, their human origin was forgotten. They became gods, or lightborn, as they let themselves be worshipped as. Yet the longer they reigned, the louder the voices grew that accused them of tyranny. The loudest being that of Naranzul Aranthi. And he succeeded in achieving what was once thought impossible. He gathered an army, overturned the lightborn, and gave back freedom to mankind. However, the price for this was high, because where there are gaps of power, fights erupt. As such, this world grew into what it is today. Shattered, riven, and broken into pieces. But all of this was merely a diversion, so that no one would notice something else. The death of the Lightborn had set something into motion, clockwork, having long stood still. Its gears now once again slowly began to turn. This is the story of someone who wanted to be free. 